This is a large uh, installation map that was completed by artist Jesse V and myself for the show. It kind of provides a historical background for the entire exhibition because we realized very early in the process of doing this that there was very little research done on this period and what did exist was not very uh, thorough or rigorous. So this map picks out the important points in the Hollywood scene and the entire punk landscape in general from 1977 to 1984, but also marks out specific points in the history of East LA punk that were kind of foundational or just kind of interesting. They give you a better idea of how that scene developed and what was going on in that scene. And we realized if we were going to do this show and if we were going to talk about it in the catalog essays and even have a better idea of what we were doing in general, we had to do pretty ground level research on our own. So we looked at archives of the people who were uh, part of that scene, uh, artists, musicians, and kind of just scrounged all these materials from different resources. This is kind of our, our way of presenting that. Part of the point of the map is to like, emphasize the fact that everything, all the venues and all the outlets for zines, for records, for, for gigs and things like that, were largely concentrated over here and later on by like 78, 79 in downtown. And so we're kind of setting that in relation to what was going on in East LA. And although the bands would later be able to play clubs in Hollywood, you see you have like you have some very few points over here where things were actually happening. And, and the reason we have question marks behind some of them is because we've come across these in research, but we're not quite sure. So we're hoping people answer those questions for us um, uh, because we want to know. A lot of these materials will be on the database at the UCLA Chicano Studies Research Center so that we're creating kind of a foundation for future research in the process of doing the show. And through this map, I think you get the sense, and this is what we're hoping to convey, is the reason that the VEX started. And the VEX started in the self-help graphics in East LA, which is already a cultural arts center. Joe Max was a beer salesman for Budweiser, wasn't he? I think Miller. Miller or something? And I remember he delivered these cases of beer right before these same gigs in somebody's garage or backyard or some studio, he was like catching on to something was going on because it was the synergy of the scenes amazing. And the, to his credit, he just went for it. I think he gave the East LA scene an epicenter of its own. Just as artists in the East Side needed a place to exhibit and produce their work because all those facilities and all those institutions were on the West Side, musicians also by 1979 were needing that kind of space because the bands that were starting in East LA by 1979 couldn't get gigs in Hollywood clubs. The idea was like from 77 to 79 during the early LA punk scene, it was very fluid, very open, very experimental. Anyone could show up and join the band. By 1979, uh, which most people would mark as the end of the, the early LA punk scene, it became much more closed off. They have a lot of clicks. The clubs are not are booking kind of bands that are established. And you have the onset of hardcore, which is pretty much, for the most part, a movement for young white men. Right? So the, the bands starting in East LA didn't necessarily have a place in Hollywood at that point, when they were all starting out around 1979, 1980. So they were all playing backyard parties, uh, disco dances, high school dances, until the Vex started. And they all kind of came together, and a scene was born, and a, a kind of multi-dimensional scene that also involved the arts as well as music. And it became kind of a place. It only lasted for six months, but it was enough for a scene to coalesce, for other musicians to meet each other, for other artists to meet the musicians, and it kind of started a long period of collaboration between that group of people that lasted three or four years, four to five years, where musicians and artists were kind of exchanging very fluidly. There were fashion shows, and photography, poster production, album cover production, uh, performance art. The Vex was a club, it wasn't the East LA scene, it was a club. The East LA scene was all over the place. Boyle Heights, City Terrace, Commerce, Alhambra. I mean, there's people from all over the place. We were everywhere. The same night, we were at the Vex, then we went to the Mara Wongs, to the Atomic Cafe. We were like sharks. We were always going places, finding places. Like the Atomic Cafe was our favorite place. The, the cook was a junkie, but they had the best soup there. <laughs> involved with the East LA scene, group artists and poets and stuff, and it just seemed to jive with the music. We didn't have Photoshop then, we didn't have computers, you know, we, we had Zaptonize it and glue. He's doing a cut and paste flyers, because that's what everybody was doing, was cut and paste flyers. I was, because I had a print studio, and it was just a struggling print studio in the park, I was the one willing to go, well, let's just make some screen posters now. Look at the Xerox flyers, that's like, put down some colors. You look at the brat cover, you know, I don't know what Richard was thinking when he was doing that, but look at all the colors he put up to it, and it stood out, you know, and it was amazing. You know? This is a punk prom poster, a show that took place at Self-Help Graphics and Art, the space where the Vex was held. Um, this actually happened slightly before the Vex, and probably kind of in some ways laid the foundation for the idea that it could be a music venue. The band X playing, obviously. It's a poster done by Richard Guardo, the master printmaker, who'd already done posters for the Screamers and the Plugs and would end up founding Fatima Records. 
Um, and I'd seen this, actually I found this exact poster when I was working at Self Help Graphics and found it in the bottom drawer of something, you know, no one knew it existed there. But like a lot of things in the show, material that people haven't seen, you know, and I think that's the larger point we're making. Some of these things that were taken as kind of ephemeral flyers or publicity material are actually kind of aesthetic objects in their own right and deserve a spot in that history as well. You know, because I'm coming to this as a fan, what was it like to be an angry young female from the neighborhood looking for outlets? You look around here, you look at all these pictures and stuff. How do you think Teresa felt being the only female starting an East LA scene in an all male band? It must have been tough. You know? This is a piece by a younger artist, John Minor, who's a printmaker. He does posters for different gigs uh, around town for punk bands and things like that. And for this show, he went around actually to an X show that happened recently and just asked the girls that were in line if they would mind standing, posing for a photo. And it's still cool because it's not computerized, it's still done by hand. You still gotta burn a screen, you still gotta get the ink and scrape it down, you still gotta get those colors together. So it's great because everything is done by hand. So uh, John Minor, uh, another printmaker who's in the show, uh, Jesse Gadaudi, actually trained with Richard Guarda, who did the punk prom poster, who did a lot of the album design, and now are both uh, master painters in their own right. Because this was a multimedia scene and a multimedia movement, uh, trying to incorporate all those elements into the show. And Diane Gambo, who was a part of the original scene, who was a photographer at the time, an artist, kind of like a multimedia artist doing photography and fashion design, and she created for us a large installation that kind of replicates some of the backdrops she used to do for the bands. But it's a great piece, it's, it's enormous that she did it just particularly for this show. Yeah, they were sitting in the garage collecting dust. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I just like the juxtaposition of this work next to Exine Srebrenica's work as well because this stuff is from 2006-2007, so you're looking at this 20-year span between the two groups of bodies of work, but stylistically, this piece, for example, in comparison to that one, they look like they're contemporary work. Yeah. <laughs>